But damn it, if the bad guys hadn't followed her there. And like, they accidentally over music sting that moment. Like she walks in and we pan to the bad guy and it's like, I wanted it to pan over to a guy with the electric guitar and they're like, put it out, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because every so often it pays the fuck off. <laughs> I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath will be unable to join us this week and will regret it for the rest of his goddamn life, but. Sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am complete as a human being, <laughs> Noah. Thank you for asking. I, I have reached nirvana, my be- my final form, my best self. My hair is blonde now just from watching <laughs> this incredible <laughs> movie. And we're also excited to welcome back our third favorite guest masochist. Sorry, forgot Keisha for a second. Our fourth favorite guest masochist, improv comic, and film masochist extraordinaire, Devin Heater. Devin, welcome back to the show, sir. I'm be- Who else is ahead of me? Like Keisha, Keisha, I get, I get Keisha. Yeah, Keisha's so always... a little just- child, so it's just important for me to know. Right, no, 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 I get it, I get it. Uh, Thomas Smith, our buddy from over at Serious Inquiries Only and, and Opening Arguments, he's our second okay. favorite, very firmly, and our favorite is, is Michael Marshall, who is a British skeptic that has the awesome... Liverpool accent it's like hanging out with a beetle okay so, that makes sense to me yeah all right you know what I, I'll take it I'll take fourth it's a good list it's you're on a very good list so uh <laughs> so tell us Devin what will we be breaking down today well we watched transformed a movie about a lady preacher and her karate buddies who just ball kick and face slap their way to salvation <laughs> yeah, uh, you know they get that sweet you know they hit that gallbladder seven and you're done <laughs> Mm-hmm. You're done. That'll do it. There's no, there's no counter to the gallbladder seven. <laughs> well, as we'll learn, uh, spoiler alert: a certain amount of toe raising turns out to be a real, <laughs> but it's got to be sequential toe raising. Yes, this was yeah. so goddamn amazing. Toe raising. I yes, <laughs> exactly. preferred term. Alternating synchronized toe raising. Very important. That's going to make sense eventually, folks. We promise. That's foreshadowing. We did some foreshadowing there. So, Eli, (laughs) how bad was this movie? Well, if you love correcting people's pronunciation of karate (laughs) and you think a great pickup line is telling someone how many ways you could kill them using just your thumb, you will love this movie. It is literally wrist control the movie. There is a wrist control demonstration in this Christian movie. Yep. Where he actually says, and now I have control of my opponent's wrists. Yes, that's an actual line in the film. It's so goddamn amazing. They called this movie Transformed because you will be. You will be. Uh, IMDb's estimate of this movie's budget, by the way, $700,000. God, Not that buys possible. so much uh, personal protective equipment. <laughs> It's not possible they spent $700 on this movie. Oh, it's physically impossible. There was $699,989 worth of cocaine on that budget, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, think that's, I think that's what the hammer charges to show up. Okay. Oh, that's true. We do see him renegotiate his contract in the middle of the film. So, uh, so To be fair, literally everyone will renegotiate their contract on absolutely everything in this movie. Oh. <sighs> All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I mean, this is the best depiction of an angel pedophile ninja. That I've, ever seen. <laughs> uh, I've seen a lot, to be fair. Right. No, exactly. Exactly. The Venn diagram of angels, pedophiles and ninjas is just one big circle. <laughs> I should point out that character, by the way, is the writer of the film. And as much as the toe raising joke will eventually make sense later, 
the angel pedophile ninja will not. We will just stare in awe at those three words throughout this entire film, and we will never be able to give you any more context for those. I was going to go with best worst psychic film description. Okay, because like on IMDb and on the, the, the film's website and shit, it says this film will be a dramatic and controversial story about yada, yada, yada. Like, it's a bold prediction of what this film is, <laughs> in my opinion, that misses by quite a lot. Yep. Yep. I'm going to go with best worst climactic battle. So, uh, kind of already gave it away. Angel, pedophile, ninja. <laughs> but this movie basically ends with Indiana Jones pulling out the gun and shooting the guy with the scimitar. That's the like climactic ending of this movie. Well, what I love about this movie's ending is that there were like definitely seven people in an argument about which one of them was the main character that never got resolved. Right. Oh, I, I literally like I, I, I can't name any character whose name isn't a tool. <laughs> yeah. They compromised and just shot everyone like everyone was the protagonist, including the character who will have no backstory lines or purpose. <laughs> Which nope. one of those are you talking about? <laughs> literally, there's at least three of them I can come up with. All right. That's true. Well, I tell you what, we have kegs worth of kick ass to tap so we're gonna pause for a quick break but when we come back we'll dive into all the high flying karate action that is transformed hey everyone uh welcome to terrible meat cook anonymous i'm dave uh why don't we go around the room introduce ourselves yeah so I i'm also dave that's fun uh i used to make some pretty bad meat decisions you know Microwave chicken wings. Hell, microwave steak. Uh, but I'm getting better. I'm still getting better. It's very nice, Dave. Hi, um, I'm Dave. I used to enjoy a well-done steak with extra ketchup. Oh, and, and how is your recovery coming? Well, thanks to the high-quality meat I get from ButcherBox, I make meat in a way that isn't horrific and disgusting. Wait, wait, what's ButcherBox? Well, every month, ButcherBox ships a curated selection of high-quality meat right to my home. All the meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones, and each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals. Packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum-sealed so it stays that way. I can customize my box or go with one of theirs. Either way, I get exactly what I want. Wow, that, that does sound good. It is, and they even have free shipping nationwide, except Alaska and Hawaii. So mark a visit to the meat counter off your list and receive quality meats delivered to your door now. Just go to butcherbox.com slash awful. That's butcherbox.com slash awful. You know, if you mix that beef with some Worcestershire sauce and some onions, those make some great burgers. No, Dave. Sorry. Sorry. Salt and pepper only and right before you grill. I'm so sorry. I know, I know better than that. All right, welcome to the first day of shooting for Transformed. All right. Woo! Yeah. All right, so why don't we just go around the table and introduce ourselves? Uh, we I must go first. Okay, you. Hi, everyone. I am fascinated white guy. Uh, I'm kind of schlubby, live in the middle of Bayonne, New Jersey. However, for some unimaginable reason, I have dedicated most of my life to studying karate that I will never, ever need, no matter how furiously I yell at people in line at Costco. Okay. All right. That's great. Uh, I well, have magic powers. You sure do. Okay. Uh, well, um, you, you, sir. Hi, hey, everybody. I'm a big guy. I'm larger than most uh, humans, so I've won a series of karate tournaments or whatever. I'm, you know, I'm not particularly good at karate, but I am, I am bigger than you, and I'm mean. And I and I enjoy hurting people, so you know it's fighting, right? Right, it sure is. Yep, yeah, that's true. And I'm Asian guy. Uh, I just want to clarify: martial arts really is the equivalent of like like soccer in my country, but it, it's been really fetishized by Western imperialism that people act like everything I say is magic, which is oh, really wow. offensive. Oh my god, that that's my amazing. Right? Yes, also, but in just, some other language that I don't speak. 
Yeah. Uh, for clarity, I, I speak English as a second language, which is just incredibly difficult to do. So uh, if everyone could give me a break when I miss one of your nonsensical, non-consistent pronouns, uh, I'd really appreciate it. As Duh, opposed to making it. I do not understand a word he said. All right. Who's ready to make a movie? I'm ready to hurt people. I will melt you with my mind. <laughs> That's probably so close to what really was happening there. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off with the logo for Sky Dragon Entertainment flying onto the screen like we just inserted a five and a half inch floppy disk into a Commodore 64. This movie was made in 2005. <laughs> I feel like a name Sky Dragon Entertainment just like it begs to have a dragon in the logo. And Doesn't it? Just a square. No, ah, there, you know there was so much complaining about this. Yeah, unfortunately, this is the only Sky Dragon Entertainment production, or we'd just be watching all of them. No, this would this show would be renamed Sky Dragon Awful Movies yeah. next yeah. week if there were more. This yeah. is the only movie they created. That's so disappointing, isn't it? Though <laughs> they clearly have more ideas. I think we could maybe start a campaign <laughs> to get them to get them to come back. Oh, a GoFundMe? Absolutely. Oh, uh, we should definitely go. Oh, yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll see about it after the record. All right. So we open up on a group of bad guys buying a briefcase full of crime. I don't... It's, I don't know that we ever see this particular group of characters again or anything. Just kind of the movie just sort of opens up with, there's going to be, you know, karate and crime. <laughs> <laughs> well, not this group of characters again. However... We will see this fat white guy in the wraparound sunglasses again because he will be every drug seller slash buyer throughout the entire film, even though they're all supposed to be different people. And he dies several times throughout the movie. So oh, yeah. just get a load of that Jeep Grand Cherokee author right there because he's <laughs> going to be our drug salesman slash purchaser for the rest of the film. We also definitely see this alley a few times. Like yep. the location oh, yeah. scout forgot to find an alley for this movie. <laughs> but like he has sort of like a driveway behind his house. <laughs> right. Just, yeah. They just use that every single it's like it's like we need an exterior scene. I guess we can shoot in the alley behind my house. I gotta call my neighbors and make sure they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, every actor and every location and every prop weapon in this movie will be playing Iron Man through this. Yeah. OK, so then we get this title screen in which the word corporation is not properly centered below Sky Dragon Entertainment as though they're intentionally no, fucking with me personally. And even the goddamn names in the credits seem fake like you seen the meme with that japanese baseball game with the american names it's like that yes gina honda yeah give uh, me a fucking so break good. i definitely there was a moment where it went like the hammer the fist and i was like ah shit i'm just watching porn again and thought yeah. I was watching <laughs> yeah when leo fung as the fist came up i was like this is gonna be the most disappointing movie i've ever seen where someone's named the fist all right i'm ready <laughs> So through these credits, we're getting this this nauseating 359 degrees stationary pan around to this uh, church. Mm -hmm. Also, I think important to note that the, there were three pastors included as production consultants in the opening credits. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't see that. Oh, my goodness. Three pastors were. <laughs> it was just like production consultants, pastor so-and-so, pastor so-and-so, pastor. And it was just like, you guys are that unfamiliar with the Bible that you needed three, <laughs> three pastors, like yeah. very clearly just laundering money. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's how that's how the budget was seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly, exactly. A lot of people needed to launder money. For this <laughs> yeah. That's extra terrifying when you consider like how much of the religious content of this movie is just like, I love Jesus now. Yes, you do. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. How little did they know before that? So, yeah. So speaking of which, like, right, because we open up on this lady priest. This is uh, Pastor Deborah. She's going to be I, the main character, I question mark. And she's given this sermon that's about all the drugs on the streets with the kids and whatnot. There is not a single sentence that she says that actually makes sense if, nope, if no. you write it down. Nope, no. And yeah, 
all of her lines have been put through Google Translate into another language and then back into English again several times. Yeah. Like several. But she's talking with the enthusiasm of, you know, someone who's in a church that's really has a high energy. But the, I was going to call them the audience. I guess that's not what you call people at church. <laughs> but the con- congregation is like, could not be more bored with oh. her fiery rhetoric. No. Their boredom graduates to hatred as we watch. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they're they're taken in the they offer up an amen as though they were fucking pod people. And then we zoom in on this one kid. This is Kevin. So Kevin, as she's talking, she's gonna be like, Yeah, you guys know about all of the drug kingpins in the neighborhood, like Cholo and Spike. And we zoom in on Kevin, who's like, mm, I could really go for some cocaine right now (laughs) and he's gonna have a little flashback to that time that cholo and spike came around and gave him and all his eight-year-old buddies the timeshare pitch about being criminals oh my it's the best the be a drug mule sales pitch just like by the way which involves i know what eight-year-olds like Fine dining and going to the best pubs in town. Right? Oh, yeah. You guys want you guys want to eat the best restaurants? Go to the best pubs. Have you thought about your Roth IRA? How diversified <laughs> are you? <laughs> Come on, kids. I know what you like. Yeah. Have a Pokemon <laughs> card. And also, here's my here's my stock guy. He's he does great. <laughs> Yeah, and dental. Ooh, yeah. So, yeah, once the kids realize that they can't afford not to join this criminal enterprise, this grown ass man walks up to a nine year old. And that's the thing is, we, they didn't use like 14 year olds. If it, these kids are like eight, nine, and 10, grown ass man walks up to this nine year old and he goes, Have you thought about our little business deal? But the nine year old, he, he doesn't want to do business with, with Cholo. Right. To which Cholo responds, all right, I'm not going to lie, I'm disappointed, but uh, know that our offer stands. Uh, do me a favor, check us out on Glassdoor. I think you're going to find we have a really great uh, corporate culture. So if you change your mind, please uh, please reach out. This is not an offer no, yeah. that expires. Apparently, you can say no to drug dealers. Yeah. Just, just like, hey, kid, you're going to deal drugs for me or else. Uh, no, thanks. All right, cool, cool, cool. Great, great, great. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that or else thing. It's just I'm snacky. You know when you're like angry? That's me. <laughs> So, yeah, and then we so we cut back into the sermon. She wraps up, and then we cut immediately from the guy who they were just using as the exemplar when they said eating at the finest restaurants in the city. The man they were pointing at when they said that. We cut to him walking out of a goddamn pizza hut. <laughs> okay, I'm so confused by this product placement. Here's my only theory. Because there will be several very, very prominent pieces of product placement in this movie. I think the people whom they transformed were like, yeah, man, you just put Pizza Hut in your movie and then you call them and they're like, you're welcome. And they send you the money. Yeah, right. It's like kidnapping. (laughs) That is how it works, though. I film myself every time I go to Pizza Hut. I assume that the checks are just in the mail. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, no, I honestly, I believe that's exactly what happened, honestly. So then, yeah, so he brings pizza back to his kid. Cholo does, the the big main drug dealer guy. And he's like, the kid's like, hey, dad, you're a pretty good dad. He's like, I sure am. How about we just reinforce that with a montage? This drove me insane. This fucking montage. I called my friends in the Bay Area. And I was like, is there a Disney theme park near you guys? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and they were like no and I was like okay because I'm watching this movie definitely at a Disney theme park and then definitely a shot of the Golden Gate Bridge you think I'm not going to fucking notice that they did They did San Francisco and LA on Saturday <laughs> what a stupid fucking montage like, Jesus, like, I'm, like, I'm not, they assume that I'm high watching this movie and they were right but, but still <laughs> yeah so like first of all like Disney World isn't enough. That can that's just part of your montage. You get to get to Disney World. I think that's a decent Saturday. You've done your job. Also, here's some other weird fucking product placement. There is a five goddamn minute film of the Disney parade shot at night with no lighting. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 
They went onto California's Board of Tourism website and just <laughs> took everything and mashed it together. Oh, there you go. Okay. Worse, I think he just took his vacation videos. Yep. Right. I think they were like, oh, and then there's a montage, but we can't shoot it. Hey, you've got a son, right? Do you guys ever like hang out? Can we get some of those videos? <laughs> <laughs> and that's that whole scene. Well, we have that the wrap up on it right after the montage is over. The kid's sitting there with his dad saying, boy, dad, you sure are a great dad. I hope you don't turn out to be a arch criminal because that'd be super disappointing. Okay, son, fall asleep now. To which the child's like, okay. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and then the next morning, the kid wakes up. He misses dead mom a little bit. It is a Christian movie. Uh, we've already had a pastor and a dead mom. And then babysitter chick shows up, right? Is she mm-hmm. a babysitter or is she just mom for money? I, I, Ooh. Interesting question. Interesting question. There will be a <laughs> lot of questions about who the fuck she is and why the fuck she shows back up in the movie. So uh, get ready for more of those. But she gets him ready for school. I also I want to point this out. I know this is a minor thing, but time runs backwards in this universe. We open on a Sunday sermon. Then we cut to the kid saying, hey, next morning is Saturday. What are we going to do on Saturday? The following morning, the kid has to go to school after Saturday. That's a Friday. Time runs backwards in the universe. It's like memento. You got to piece it together. Right. So anyway, then we've got this. um, We also have to cut back to Kevin, the kid that was flashing back in the church sermon. He's getting ready for school, too, and he's giving his mom a bunch of lip because he's on the drugs now, right? And mom is wearing her Pinot Design hoodie, Mm -hmm. which this actress very clearly insisted on wearing. (laughs) She's constantly cheating this brand to camera. (laughs) It's fucking fantastic. (laughs) So I went on a deep dive to find out more about Pinot Design. And unfortunately, they're not very funny. They're just a florist in the Bay Area. <laughs> <laughs> like, very clearly, she owns it. Yeah, right. Is related to somebody who owns it and thought this product placement would be huge <laughs> for the brand. <laughs> All right. So we're about to cut over to the school. But first, we have to meet bizarre, ominous, slow motion, trench coat silhouette man. All right. Oh. So good. So good. The dramatic music, the silhouette. Who is he? Is he a pedophile? Is it Dick Tracy? I, at this point, I assume this has got to be a bad guy. Like, there's no way this is not a bad guy. Is he an angel? Is he a pedophile? Is he a ninja? That was the original call for Superman. Not a lot of people yeah, know right? that. It's in the first comic when they and changed in. So, yeah. So, so he, he'll come back in only the best ways throughout the entire fucking movie. But then we cut to Kevin's mom. She's worried about him. So she sneaks to the school to look around the playground, see if she can see what he's up to. He's nowhere to be found. You know why? He's freebasing cocaine in the back of somebody's car. He's like snorting crack out of a Capri Sun. It's really <laughs> impressive. So, I've never seen anyone free base with a straw up their nose. I guess you could do that. Seems kind of inefficient, but yeah, okay. <laughs> That's what he's doing, though. But yeah, we, we're establishing the very important fact that Kevin, at nine years old, is all about the crack rock. All about the crack rock. All right, so then we cut to this. Oh, God, I love this scene. We cut to this police meeting where the police chief oh, is announcing that firearms have been banned from this city, including for cops. This will never come back. No. no. Right? We will never reference this again. But it does give us an opportunity to introduce the star of this film, question mark, George Dillman. Oh, see, I was going to say the guy who we temporarily land the camera on who has the thickest and longest neck I've ever seen. (laughs) (laughs) They do like a Passover of the so-called extras in this room. And everyone is like, you just smashed the keyboard randomizer on a Dark Souls game. It's fucking terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So but we have to talk for a minute about George Dillman. Now, in the movie, he plays Dillman George. That's literally the character's name. (laughs) Boy, was that just an unnecessary flip, huh? (laughs) Right? And he's here to explain to all of these police officers how they can 
get rich by using pressure points and then there will be pressure points below their pressure points and soon the pressure anyway so he's gonna give a i shit you not five minute long demonstration montage in the middle of this film about wrist control oh Um, but even better it's magic wrist control yes because what this guy does is he delivers a series of chi pinches and the people go ow 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 and he goes see totally incapacitated totally incapacitated <laughs> yeah I like, I like this if you grab someone's ear and rip it off it's magic yes <laughs> yes he demonstrates the the my grandma's mad at me and mm. wants me to walk into the other room technique <laughs> Now, Devin, you actually have a little background on George Dillman. Would you care to tell us who he is? Yeah, so George Dillman is a uh, is a really great, really fantastic martial artist. He apparently <laughs> actually very good at karate in the 70s, 80s, a while ago. He has pictures of himself with Muhammad Ali and Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. So he at the very least stalked both of those people. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And he, you know, obviously believes in his pressure point chi no touch knockouts. So he allows National Geographic's debunking show to examine his protege doing no touch knockouts to an Italian scientist who doesn't get knocked out. <laughs> and. <laughs> His explanation for why he doesn't get knocked out is the mm. greatest thing ever. He's like, well, you know, well, so first he starts with, he starts with, well, this guy's a total non-believer. And then recognizes that that means you have to believe that this works <laughs> for it to work. <laughs> for your knockout and technique so to work. Yes. So he backtracks and he goes, I don't know if I should be saying this on TV. But if your tongue is in the wrong place, that nullifies it. <laughs> if your one toe is up and one toe is down, that nullifies it. And then if they try to do it again, you switch the toes and that nullifies it. Yes. And if you're breathing, that nullifies it. <laughs> and if blood is coursing through your body and your heart beating, <laughs> nullifies it. If you're not my six students, it nullifies it. Right, yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's so, it, again, like like everyone else who's ever said they could do no-touch knockouts and manipulate chi, it turns out to be complete horse shit as soon as you put anyone who doubts it in front of them. And then in the movie, he does this weird demonstration where he starts talking about how, you know, the body is sliced into different quarters and there's different electricity in the various quarters. And as a demonstration to, to prove that this is correct, he reaches around behind somebody's head and then yanks their hair and he's like, see, this hurts. Why would this hurt when I pull his hair and twist his head if it wasn't for his electricity being negative in one place and positive in another? Here's what I will say about George Dillman because we've seen a lot of bullshit martial arts. George Dillman's is the only one I've seen that includes uh, S&M aftercare. (laughs) Yeah. Yes. So literally... He, after he dem- does each of these demonstrations, he <laughs> then holds the person and burps them like a baby and tells them that they're okay. <laughs> yes. All right. And so now we have to meet the mayor, our bad guy. The mayor is explaining to his tall Tyler how they will now be dealing drugs with the CIA. And tall Tyler, by the way, who will only appear in this scene goes, excuse me, mayor. Aren't drugs illegal? <laughs> to which, to which the mayor replies, "It's okay. We're under government immunity." Exact quote. If you know what I mean, I do not know what you mean. <laughs> which, like, uh, is like a little bit like they really don't have to worry about being prosecuted if the CIA came to them and said, "Hey, we want to sell drugs in your town." Yeah. No, I think they're pretty much good on that. Like you are pretty like, well, hey, why are you doing drugs? Oh, because the CIA showed up and told us we had to. <laughs> all right. Or, well, yeah, all right. we'll, we'll talk to See, them. That's, that's, that's a pretty good excuse. <laughs> <laughs> all 
All right, so now we cut to Dillman having dinner with this woman who's going to show up two or three other times in the movie. And who's maybe the same actress as the as the babysitter from earlier. I could never <laughs> decide whether they're the same person. <laughs> oh, that is strong possibility. Interesting mystery. Now, they have a conversation here. I can't tell you much about what was said because... The background music and chatter of the other d- diners does not give a goddamn that we're trying to listen to this conversation. Uh, you mean someone's nephew's fucking amazing ska band that drowns out the entire... <laughs> as far as the chief of police knows... <laughs> there was no volume configuration on TVs and laptops that made this in any way audible. It was nope. pretty impressive. Nope. It was pretty awful. Yeah. But I did pick out that he works for a mysterious government agency, which will remain unnamed throughout the film. His boss and hers is Mr. X. Uh, That never comes back, which is the best. (laughs) Right? Yes. (laughs) I just want to touch on one other thing in this scene. So they're supposed to be having dinner. George Dillman is going to town on this food (laughs) while he says his lines. So if you could hear it, which you can't, you would probably hear, so anyways, Mr. X, <laughs> which means at some point someone had to be like, hey, George, we're, um, it's just like a dinner scene. You don't have to, uh, uh, if you put a steak in front of me, I'm going to eat it. <laughs> You know, Joe, we're probably going to do multiple takes. So you probably don't want to eat multiple steaks. Much. Got it. Great. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> no, no. And oh, and then of course, at the end of this scene, we have another shot of slow motion pedophile angel ninja trench coat silhouette guy. He's less of a silhouette, though. We do get a chance to see that he's an Asian gentleman in, in this scene. Mm-hmm. And then we witness a drug deal. Uh, <laughs> same white guy yep. with the wraparound sunglasses. Yep, yep, he's there. So apparently, what we're supposed to be seeing here is that this is on Cholo's turf, and Cholo's guys are very protective of drug dealing on their turf, right? So they deal some drugs, which is they run up to a car that drives by and go, "Here you go, man. Here you go." And then the car drives by. Never once in this movie, by the way, do they use kids to deal drugs. Nope. Which nope. is the premise of this movie is yep. that it's bad to use kids to deal drugs. <laughs> always adults. Yep. Only yeah, adults always. buying, only adults selling. It's just they just test the drugs on the kids. <laughs> yeah, I guess the kids are just consumers. <laughs> Would you say you relate most to Koki the Clown or Koki the Cucklefish? <laughs> All right. Good to know. Good to know. So, yes. Yeah, so one of the guys comes up and he's like, hey, man, you can't sell drugs on our turf. And the other guy goes, like, this is my front yard, man. Come on. You can't be like, and, and, and so he shoots him. Um. Well, <laughs> oh. shoots is in quotes here. Yeah. Shoots. He. I've never seen someone fail to pull a gun out and shoot and keep it in the movie. It's phenomenal. He. It's like they couldn't afford slow mo, so he's doing it himself. Right. He's just like. <laughs> I wanted the other guy to move regular motion and just be like, what are you doing? Oh, you have a gun. I get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I wrote my notes here. Okay, well, this is where the review has to end because obviously we are all just going to watch that five second death sequence over and over again and continue to do so until we die because nothing will ever be that good again. <laughs> wow. That was oh, pretty so- goddamn amazing. So sometime later, we get Cholo, you know, he's chatting with his henchies, including the guy that just shot this kid. He's very upset about the kid shooting, right? He's a drug dealer with a heart of gold. Yeah, a heart of gold to the point that he he, he won't say bullshit in the movie. He goes, uh, you're, you're killing kids. We're about to do this big deal, and you're going to stir up the media with all this bull crap? I'm like, <laughs> wow, man, it's not all that Christian, but it's filled out the fucking bingo card already. <laughs> Do one of you guys murder a kid? Be honest. I'm going to turn around. Whoever puts the dead kid on my desk, <laughs> not in trouble. Not to mention that we're like two weeks into this movie or 20 minutes into this movie or however long this movie is. <laughs> and I have no idea who the hero or the villain are. And I think it's both this guy. Yeah, right. No, yep. you, you could be correct there, right? So, okay, so then, then we have to have a, a quick scene where we're going to flesh out the Pastor Deborah character. She's going to make a late play at being the main character here. Okay. 
This is the concerned scene where the characters will end every sentence by accident with concerned. It's just literally the entire time. We are concerned. There are crimes and drugs. I am concerned. Are you concerned? Because I'm concerned. Yes, we are concerned. (laughs) And I love that Pastor Deborah and mother of murdered child come to the mayor's office and the mayor goes, so how can I help you? Yeah. What what do you guys want? It's like, like, this is the murdered woman. The murdered child mom. Like, what do you think? She, my taxes are too high. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> exactly. I got these parking tickets. There's been this pothole outside my house. Do I still get the child care tax credit at the end of the year? Because I had a, I had a kid in. I'm November. sorry, I just got turned around. Where do I go to pay this parking ticket? Yeah, right. <laughs> Why don't you have online water bill pay? This is fucking ridiculous. So okay, preacher lady drives away because the mayor seems. Curiously unconcerned about all of the drug dealing in his town. So she's driving away. She's talking to an Asian gentleman that we have not met in the movie yet who will disappear at a certain point. And she says, you know, I'm starting to think that there's a conspiracy in this town. I don't think Cholo is really the main bad guy at all. And the guy nods along and he's like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And she's like, are you are you thinking that we should be vigilante pastors because like like superheroes like Batman? Because that's what I was Thinking. Vigilante pastors, yeah, absolutely. All right, good, good. Nothing better than a vigilante pastor. <laughs> I mean, is, is there a better thing? Uh, no, I'll wait. not in cinema. <laughs> 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 All right, so now we get we cut back to Kevin. He's getting home to his mom and giving his mom a bunch of shit because he's on all the drugs, right? This is where she asks, Kevin, what's the matter? Did you have a quarrel at school today? <laughs> Was it the haberdasher son? Was there a rep scallion involved? Tell me. A quarrel? I bet she, you know, did you have a quarrel? Cut. Can we just say fight? No. I'm saying quarrel. I'm saying quarrel, and I'm wearing this hat for my florist shop. Fuck yes, you. she's wearing the hat for the florist shop. No, yeah, that's right. She was. God, I love this woman. <laughs> so, oh. And you know they can't say fight because every time they do, George Dillon runs in the room and pretends to knock you out until you fall down and hold still. <laughs> and then he fucking rocks you to sleep for 20 minutes. Yeah, right. Burps you. <laughs> yeah, so so the mom, the Kevin's mom, talks to Pastor Deborah. She's like, yeah, you know, I'm really worried about my son. He's acting like a 13-year-old ever since he turned 13, you know. She's like, yeah, that's rough. Uh, probably needs to go to church more. You know, because I guess when all you have is a savior, everything looks like a nail wound. <laughs> I, I don't know how that it doesn't work, I guess, as well as I thought it would. Anyway, so then <laughs> slow motion, ominous trench coat, pedophile, angel ninja walks by. I, I have to point that out every time that happens. Because when, when, whenever you're confused, he just walks by and you go, oh, I get it. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, I get it now. There's a crazy ninja pedophile. Got got it. <laughs> At this point, I wrote in my notes, is he walking into a movie that he's actually in? Yeah, he's just he's just cutting through. He's just passing through this movie. Sorry, sorry. I'm an he extra just, in a Jet Li film. on the same studio lot. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm filming The Crow 3. I don't know where it is. So, okay. So then we get Mom going in to wake up Kevin for school the next day, but he's dead from all the drugs. Jeez, I can't. What a fucking lightweight. He's been doing drugs for like a day and a half. Oh. Like, come on, kid. And this actress shakes the fuck out of this child actor. Yes. Like, he opens his eyes and is like, ow, stop, stop. (laughs) If he wasn't dead before, he is now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so the kid dies from all the drugs. Mom walks off all barefoot and crazy. We have this all like this long sequence of scenes, like re- establishing that she's lost her mind because of the death of her child. Yeah, it's a very sensitive portrayal of the loss of a child. <laughs> I'm just writing in my notes in all caps. What is this movie about? <laughs> <laughs> it's like this movie gets distracted every time someone says a sentence. Right. Right. It's like if the, it, there is like a form of literalism to the script that like every line that is said suddenly becomes what the rest of the movie is about until there's a new line that takes it in a different direction. Yeah. No, it's like Memento guy wrote it or something. Yeah. Yeah, so, but Pastor Deborah uh, comes in and she's like, you know, hey, you know, you've lost your mind because of your son. I'm going to do a Jesus intervention and hug the crazy right out of you, okay? Yeah. I will put you in a headlock until you admit that your son is dead. <laughs> the best line ever is, 
Kevin is no more crazy bitch. <laughs> yes. That like, is the exchange. Did you say crazy bitch? <laughs> like, first of all, like, earlier, the drug dealer said bull crap, and you're going full <laughs> out yes, crazy right. bitch. <laughs> Pastor Deborah. <laughs> Jesus is tired of your bullshit, Martha. Get it together. <laughs> so Jesus ain't fucking around. <laughs> All right, so that was a disturbing ass series of scenes, and I wasn't ready for it in this silly fucking movie. So we're going to pause to get our heads straight. But when we come back, we're going to dive into even more Transform. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Does it seem like you're moving ahead in life, but your hairline is moving backwards? Maybe your dad had to settle for hair loss, but thanks to him's, you don't have to. It's time to prevent more hair loss and no better time than, well, you still have some. Thanks to science, hair loss can be optional. Him connects you to FDA approved products to treat hair loss, and they have thousands of happy customers loving their results. Time at home is an opportunity for self care. Hims will connect you to licensed medical professionals online to answer your questions for free and to see if FDA approved products to treat hair loss are right for you. If approved products will be shipped directly to your door in discreet packaging. Hey, anyone can make claims about treating hair loss, but if you're not happy after 90 days, just email Hims for a full refund. Today, Hims is giving you their best offer yet. If you're not happy with your results after 90 days, Hims will give you a full refund and right now our listeners can get their first visit absolutely free. Just go to forhims.com slash gam. That's forhims.com slash gam. Full refund or price paid available for the first 90 days supply. Refund request must be made between 90 and 180 days after product shipment delivered. Prescription products require an online consultation with a medical professional who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for full details and important safety information. Remember, that's 4 slash gam. Kevin, honey, it's time for school. Yeah, all right, mom, just give me one second, okay? Um, everything okay in there, yeah, honey? Yeah, fucking, fucking thinking about Dora the Explorer, mom. Uh, oh, do you like Dora the Explorer? God, like her, Mom. She fucking rules. She sees the fucking beginning and the end of culture, man. Have you seen her jump into a map? Uh, no. Well, you should, Mom. I mean, she fucking sold out when Diego came on the scene. That's fucking society, right? I mean, some dudes just, like, come across all fucking he fucks and then they really give a chance of expansion in any of us. And it's hard because the fucking money named Boots, you know, Boots is fucking in charge. God, I hate Diego. So fucking much. Okay, honey, have fun at school. I wish Swiper would just try swiping me once. I just fucking wish he would try to swipe for me. I'd fucking rip his dick off. Okay. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and just in case you were starting to doubt that Pastor Deborah was ever going to kick any ass, we're going to open up on her doing a little Tai Chi in front of a big ass cross with very ominous music going on in the background. Yeah, this music is way more dramatic than Tai Chi. Yes. <laughs> and to be fair, she's not actually doing Tai Chi. She's just waving her hands Tai Chi-ishly. Right? Uh, she's doing synchronized swimming standing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not real karate like pressure points. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, and then we see her, we cut straight from her doing the Tai Chi to her going into the middle of the fucking drug dealer line down meeting, <laughs> right? Which, like, I assume because of it just, like, smash cuts to the, that it's, like, the location is, like, around the corner from where she's doing Tai Chi. Like, the drug dealers meet up in her garage. Yeah, right. Like, she heard <laughs> them and she's like, God damn it, I was in the middle of my Tai Chi. I'm going to go tell them off. Oh, we got drug dealers again. You know what they say? If you have one, you have a thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so she she goes in and she's it's it's the drug dealers. It's Cholo and, and his uh, henchies and a bunch of nine year olds. So she goes in there and gives all the kids the three count. Right. She's right. like, you guys better all leave this drug dealer meeting in one, two. But the idiot doesn't do two and a half. She just counts to three and nobody leaves. <laughs> Because you got to give him a two and a half to think about the consequences of three. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The kids don't know their cues. So she gets the three and she's like, come on, leave. You fucked up the whole counting. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Ch Cholo's like, all right, I'm sick of her shit. Beat her up, henchman. And then so she gets into a fight with the henchman, but she knows Tai Chi. So she very slowly kicks his <laughs> ass. <laughs> 
they did not even pretend to try to teach her karate or stunt work for this movie. They're no. Like, yeah, you know what a kick is, right? Yeah, I just do. <laughs> just throw one of those out there at Larry. It'll be fine. But like her hammies were sore, so it's a very slow occasion. Oh, 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 sorry, I jogged yesterday. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah that'll get her. Oh. She's like picking up her leg with her hands. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. So then I guess from there, her and that Asian dude she was with earlier go on a rampage just beating up everyone with cocaine. <laughs> Good God, and this is just assault. They just walk into a yes! pool, pool hall and anyone with like a tattoo or no sleeves, they're like, we're going to fucking murder you. <laughs> <laughs> she very clearly rolls over the pool table and kicks a guy who is entirely uninvolved yes! in the fight up to this point. <laughs> Yes, exactly. They just walk in and start beating the fuck out of people. I love at one point there's these two girls that she fights, right? So they have a girl on girl fight or something. They both get knocked out. But because those extras were damned if they were going to lay on the ground in those tops, both of them get knocked out into chairs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. So fucking great. <laughs> the floor is dirty. Do we have time? Do we have time to sleep and mop? We don't. We don't have time to yeah, sleep Yeah, so mop, you guys so. get knocked out into Why does everyone chairs? pass out either on the pool table or in a chair? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, I love that scene so goddamn much. Not my favorite scene in the movie, though. We'll get to that one yet. So then we have to cut to the little scene where the where Cholo's changing his, his shirt and his henchman comes in and says, you know, doesn't matter what shirt you're wearing. You're a filthy fucking drug dealer. You do know that, right? He's like, man, I just, this shirt was dirty. I, I had pit stains and shit. I was just changing my shirt. I was like, all right, just so you know, you didn't change into a different person when you changed that shirt. You're just still the evil fucker you were when you had the other shirt on. He's like, yeah, no, I know. He's also three feet shorter than the actor who plays Cholo, which was oh, yeah. so distracting for this scene. <laughs> Cause he's like obviously doing this like face to face thing, except he's face to facing with his belly button. He's like, hell man, I just want you to know this streets my apart. <laughs> well, okay. So this actor that plays Cholo, this is Ken Moreno and he's a fucking huge dude. He's like poor man's Danny Trejo. You've seen him in a bunch of different movies. He, he was in like the fugitive. I think he was in, uh, I, I don't know. I looked at his IMDb page. There was a couple of movies that were like, oh, okay, yeah, he was gigantic Hispanic guy in that movie. That's right. So, yeah, he's a <laughs> goddamn giant. But when this other character is supposed to be, like, intimidating him, it's hard to ignore that fact. <laughs> hey, lift me up for a second. Yeah, lift me up <laughs> on that stool right next to you. <laughs> Better not ever cross me. <laughs> I gotta say, like, it's been so long since I've had, like, a solid understanding of any of the in this movie like these <laughs> drug dealers all live together yeah like, right Cholo's in what I assume is his bedroom putting a shirt on and Minnie me walks in and is like hey Cholo and it's like did you like just break into my house like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? like do they live in a college dorm like I, what is happening <laughs> I don't know that's not where he lives though because he keeps his son at this other house right <laughs> So, yeah, and, so, and then we have to cut to a different group of people dealing drugs. Now, when I say different group of people, I don't mean different actors. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Still white guy, wrap around sunglasses. I wanted so badly when the guy gets out of the car to just be like, didn't you get shot in the last scene? I swore you got. I don't mean the guy who says no, all I'm white people say look guy, the That was same, a guy in a man. brown shirt. I'm a guy in a white shirt. This is a totally different guy now. But yeah, so he's dealing drugs again just by walking up to a car. Somebody goes, can I have one drugs, please? And him going, yep, here's one drugs. Do I need to give you money? Nope. Well, first of all, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you got my special package. Oh, that's right. Talking about a penis. <laughs> For the first time ever. Hey, you got a special package. Oh, you mean the, the, the actual package of drugs you ordered? Yes, I did. <laughs> We don't have to speak an innuendo. You're here to buy drugs. If any of us are cops, this is going badly. <laughs> so, yeah, but so then one of Cholo's guys shows up and confronts these two, and they're like, hey, man, you can't sell drugs here either. So they beat him up. They beat up Cholo's guy, and they drive off. It's unclear whether they beat him up for stopping them from dealing drugs or for having the tightest belt I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted one of these scenes 
not to end in violence for them to be like, all right, well, where can we deal drugs? And then it flash cuts to them pointing on a map. And he's like, all right, you see this 14th and 5th? There's a lot of good foot traffic there. That's all <laughs> yours, right? I'm not trying to keep you out of business. It's, really, it's just a, it's about saturating the market. You understand? No, we understand. We understand. So, you guys want to go to Kudoba? But no, instead, they beat this guy up. One second later, Cholo shows up. So it's time for us to have our car chase in a $14 budget film. Right. Oh my mm. god! Very clearly, everyone's obeying the speed limit yep. and using their turn signals and stopping at stop signs. But the music is dramatic, and everyone's <laughs> looking over their shoulder a lot. So it's a chase scene. Well, they've added screechy sound effects. At one point, they speed up the footage, a la Charlie Goddamn Chaplin. They <laughs> sure do. But they don't do. They don't not do that because there's a pedestrian who also starts walking as quickly in the background of that scene. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> so there's just a lady power walking alongside the car all of a sudden. Well, and then at a certain point, they they realize apparently, oh yeah, we're not. All the cool stuff in a car chase involves, you know, breaking the law or fucking up the car. So they have him get out of the car and start a foot race. But the two gentlemen that he's chasing are way heavy fuckers and Cholo is in really good shape. So them trying to film it. It's like, you know, when you're chasing a three year old, but you can't catch him or that fucks <laughs> up the game. You know, Cholo's like walking by him going, oh, I'm going to catch you any minute. Oh, you better not get away. <laughs> They're in different shirts by the time he does get to them because they soaked through his sweat. Right. <laughs> Oh, I love it so much. Eventually, they're like, wait, where did he go? Apparently, Cholo got around behind him, and he's like, oh, you know what would be awesome if, if I swing around in front of him, and I hide in this bush until they think I'm gone, and when they think I'm gone, I'm going to jump out and whip their asses. It'll be, it'll be fucking awesome. So that's what he does. <laughs> Good to know that he has a sense of the dramatic. Meanwhile, Fred goddamn Williamson is in this movie as well. Now, he, I don't expect anybody will re recognize the name Fred Williamson unless they're really into black exploitation movies. He did a lot of like he was in every goddamn thing back in the 70s and early 80s, everything that was like low budget and shit. You might recognize him from Dusk Till Dawn. He was the big black dude that kicked ass in the last act of, uh, of Dusk Till Dawn. It, when you see him, you'll be like, oh, yeah, he fought somebody in something I saw or whatever. I thought about that mustache while having sex before. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Yeah. But he is suddenly introduced to the movie. He's getting a call from that girl that Dillman George was having lunch with. He is Hammer, and they're going to need Hammer <laughs> to also be in this movie. Uh, we're putting together wacky martial artists. It appears you're doing clicky stick fighting. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Clicky stick fighting guy named Hammer, pressure points guy, and spoiler alert, there's a vague blurry guy who I think I also hired. He's going to be in the movie as well. You might be Jesus. We don't know. In the middle of this scene, a cat meows audibly in the background. Yes! <laughs> and it's just like, no. Like, come on. Like, this was easy. But one thing we, well, the only thing we know about Hammer is that he wants to get paid. Yep. So he's like, nope, we did it in that tape. We're moving on. <laughs> and they do this thing that they do with everything in the movie where he goes, my usual fee. And she's like, yes. And he's like, great. What a pointless series of sentences for this movie. <laughs> so, and then we get the scene that this movie and my life are all about. Oh, this is the scene where George Dillman begins by dropping into a split because Van Damme has nothing on this guy. Nothing. <laughs> oh, credit where credit is due. I did not expect George Dillman to be able to do a split. I didn't expect George <laughs> Dillman to be able to climb like an unbroken set of stairs. So when he dropped into a split, I needed time to recover. <laughs> so There is a not insignificant chance that those are not his legs. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Right. Maybe he can do a split. Maybe this is they blew their budget on this bit of movie magic. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he's just out there, you know, doing the splits, stretching it out, you know, like you do. And this guy walks up and he's like, "Oh, it's the pressure point guy. Eh, I don't believe in pressure points." Oh yeah, what if I hit you in the gallbladder? <laughs> Foot punch. Yes. Oh. He, he apparently hit the gallbladder spot on his foot, right? So he hits this guy in the foot, and his gallbladder hurts. Yeah, well. 
<laughs> I wanted so badly for the guy to be like, ooh, my ability to regulate insulin. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people think that's just the pancreas, but the gallbladder is actually really important for that function as well. <laughs> So, but then another guy shows up and he goes, hey, what did you do to my buddy? And George Doman knocks this guy out using theremin noises and finger waving. Yeah, he, he hypnotizes him like, you know, like, like you do to a cobra in a basket. <laughs> sort of like move around a little bit. And it's like, oh, where am I supposed to be looking? Ah, I'm tired. <laughs> um, fun fact, if you go on a deep, deep George Tillman dive, as I did. All of these extras are his students. Yes. They're in all of his videos. Yes. Amazing. So I think that this isn't, I mean, this is fake in that everything George Tillman does is fake. But I think that he thinks and his students think that he actually hit them in gallbladder and they went unconscious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This was like part movie, part not. The ending bit where he's burping all of them, where he's like standing around him going like, oh, you got to pat his back or he'll die now. Oh, do you have him? I don't, Oh, you don't have him. You know, that was all like he was pretending that was legit. Yes. Oh, yeah. He yeah. does a take to camera and he goes, oh, I think I got a little excited there. Yes. Right. He, yeah. Oh, I, I called bladder <laughs> seven to too hard. So, yeah, no, no, but that's that's legit what happened. He does a touchless knockout, which if you've never seen this happen, oh, my God, you're you're really missing out. But what it is, is you wave your hands around 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 a guy's head a lot and then you yell. And because he's in on the scam, he falls down and it's hilarious. The only thing funnier is watching them try to do that to anyone who doesn't want to play along. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so unfortunately, we have to move on from that scene to the scene where the secretary finds the mayor's list of bad guy names in 88-point font. This is the fucking great... We're literally... It's just a large print Word document that she's scrolling down, and the mayor's name is highlighted, and she's like, huh... (laughs) Like Clippy makes a cameo in this movie. <laughs> it looks like you work for a corrupt mayor. Do you know? <laughs> and I I don't know if you guys read the other names on this list. The names were amazing. Again, this was in two thousand five. Here are a couple of them: George W. Rush, Dick Chen, God. Jacques Chapak, <laughs> Rumsfeld Johnson. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in myself for not reading. <laughs> hey, man, do you know anybody with a real name? Schmunfert Kagelston. <laughs> All right. Never mind. And what I, I love so much about this is it's just a list of goddamn names. Right. There's nothing else. There's no secret plans or whatever. She's just like, wow, this is a list of all the bad guys. Holy shit. My boss is there. <laughs> yeah. Also helpful for the audience that we've never heard the mayor's name before. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like it's like mayor. And then oh, what, what the fuck are we going to call the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> But the mayor like walks in and she like shuts the file down like he caught her watching porn or something. So but he knows something's up, right? He doesn't know what she's found, but he knows she's found something. Man, he should stop storing his private documents on her. (laughs) Yeah. And they zoom in on him like the dramatic chipmunk. I mean, they they almost (laughs) use the music. It's fucking fantastic. And again, it's really worth remembering. This movie was made in 2005. Yeah. All right. So the secretary calls Pastor Deborah and she's like, I'm pretty sure you're the main character. I don't, I honestly don't know because if you're the main character, what the fuck is Dillman George in this movie? But anyway, I found some incriminating evidence. I need to talk with you, not on the phone right now as we are, but in another scene so that I can get kidnapped between now and then. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Also, when you discover corruption, federal whistleblower laws dictate you have to call your pastor. (laughs) Like, don't call the authorities, certainly. No, no. But yeah, so she goes to meet Pastor Deborah to spill the beans, but just then Cholo's guys show up and kidnap her. 
Oh, the easiest kidnapping ever. It was so nice of her to not struggle. <laughs> not right? just not struggle, but she like scooches herself into the car. She's like, out, 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 my arm, my arm, <laughs> pinching me. <laughs> well, she starts to struggle, and the guy's like, shh, shh, shh. And she's like, oh, oh, he said, shh. All right, all right, library all right. rules. All right. Well, I'm going to need a vinky as well. <laughs> so, and and it, she, so they're like, what are you doing going to see Pastor Deborah? She's like, ah, you, a spiritual uh, guidance. And then they're like, they pull out her three and a half inch fucking floppy disc and go, 2005. All right. And again, 2005, we were over floppy disks, right? I believe we were. Like we were, we got to be at the CD-ROMs by 2005. They had to take, like, they had to get this donated to them by a library, right? The <laughs> library, hey, it looks like you guys need this. One to just be like, oh, that's disc one of seven of Jill of the Jungle. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so, yeah, according to Google, we stopped using them in 98. So, yeah, they <laughs> maybe had one still laying around, I guess. And apparently they're going to torture the secretary now using the slightly further into a split than my hamstrings are comfortable with torture. Oh my God. It's amazing. And they accidentally go a little too far for this actress's comfort. So then they oh, have yeah. to scooch the yep. buckets in. I guess. Yeah. She uses her safe word. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't overly torture. We want to torture a medium. <laughs> <laughs> Remember guys, we're not going to put her in a stress position. We're going to put her in a position. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> they also let her know that they set her up for yeah. child endangerment. But, but not like with the police, with the newspaper, right? Like they had a story planted in the newspaper saying she had been arrested for child endangerment. Keep that in mind later when the fucking police show up looking for her because of all the child endangerment. Boy, it's like we told we told the police you did child endangerment. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. didn't. And I think my daughter will corroborate that story. <laughs> yeah. Why child endangerment? It's such a weird crime for this. Should we frame her for murder? No. <laughs> what? I want something better than uh, theft. Attractive, no, that's not bad enough. Attractive hazard in her yard. <laughs> um, we have a lot of drugs. We could we could just make, get a real high and then be like, no, 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 those are our drugs. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but apparently, Pastor Deborah read about this in the in the newspaper. So she goes down to the jail to find out. Like she wants to talk to the mayor's secretary at the jail. Now, they are going to tell us this is a jail. Someone's even going to say this is the only jail in the whole town. But it's very clearly George Dillman's karate dojo. Yeah. Very Because clearly. there are signs hanging on the bulletin board about the karate tournament on Thursday. <laughs> That's uh, actually a jail karate tournament. <laughs> George has a black belt in karate, but this is the first time he's ever eavesdropped on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> he, it is his first class in eavesdropping. Yes. Like, no, no, don't, don't look at them. No, don't. Don't wave so that they know you're listening. <laughs> Don't nod along. Stop nodding ears. along. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't listen with my ears. If they flex their toe, I won't be able to overhear. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, but so Pastor Deborah comes in and says, I need to see this woman that you arrested for child endangerment. And he's like, what? No, we don't have her. And, she, and she's like, oh, that's weird. And she leaves. Now, as soon as she leaves... Dillman George calls her and says, hey, your friend is being held in a warehouse on 111th Street. And she's like, how would you know that? And he's like, it will never be explained in the movie, actually. I just. That is uh, <laughs> that is uh, where the rest of the movie takes place. And we have no way to get you the there. Script. <laughs> I could send you a copy. We could eat. Well, you could watch me eat while I show you yeah. the script if you want. And OK, but now. 43 minutes into the goddamn movie, slow motion walking angel pedophile ninja trench coat guy will finally arrive where he was going, that very same warehouse. Which really doesn't make sense seeing as he's been heading there the entire movie. That means he knew that she was going to find the mayor's file and then he was going to get kidnapped <laughs> and that they, when they kidnapped her, they were going to bring her to the thing. I mean, if any of that hadn't worked out, this scene would just be him showing up and being like, Am I early? Oh, fuck. Shit. Give me one second. I think Let me he, text. Just, he, he found out that this mom was into child endangerment and decided <laughs> to team up with her. <laughs> hey, I heard, I heard you got a kid you want to endanger. I think I could help out with that. <laughs> My theory is that this character is Jesus, and I actually think that's what they were going for. 
Um, so yes, of course he would know all of that. Yeah, so they rescue her. He kicks some ass. Pastor Deborah comes in. She also kicks some ass. Mm-hmm. And once everyone's ass is kicked, she saves the secretary and takes her to the church's safe house. This is our retreat house. We don't pay taxes on it. It's it's kind of bad, honestly, that we have just a big <laughs> free house. Don't worry about it. And meanwhile, the lady's like all injured from her torture. I wanted her to be like, thighs, so flexible. <laughs> May never recover. <laughs> So they didn't, you know. Listen, when you're, when you, when you, we have to pay Hammer, you know, six hundred thousand, six hundred ninety thousand dollars to be in your movie. <laughs> uh, you don't. There's not a lot of room left for lights. No, uh, no. So uh, instead of filming night scenes at night, they just make everything blue. They just and for like almost <laughs> the rest of the movie, there is blue. Yes, because it's nighttime. Yes, they and and they've literally they're not using blue lights, right? They've put a blue filter over the goddamn camera. Yeah. Yes. And they're filming in the middle of the fucking day. There will be night birds chirping in the background. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay cuz they got a blue filter, so it's nighttime. <laughs> All right. So meanwhile, elsewhere, some fucking Miami Vice bad guy rejects walk into a building, do a drug deal, and pedophile trench coat ninja gets pictures of this. Yes. So they're meeting with the mayor's like assistant guy, the one who asked if drugs were illegal earlier before he was explained that they had political immunity or whatever. But the best part is that he he's like, uh, do you guys need to see any ID that I'm actually from the mayor? And they're like, actually, that would make us really happy if you don't mind. We'd just love to check your <laughs> credentials. Oh, okay. Now we'll sell drugs to you. Yeah. Also, like, where the, remember how the CIA is involved? They have zero representation in this. <laughs> right. At no point is someone like, oh, hey, I'm the CIA handler guy. Don't worry about me. It's like, oh, no, no, no. no. It's the mayor. The, the mayor hallucinated a meeting. <laughs> that's, that's why he thinks this is a thing. And also, by the way, so the the one guy is in there taking pictures of this, the trench coat slow motion guy. George Dillman is outside listening through the brick wall with some secret spy device. Oh, God. That's called George. Seven. <laughs> George, <laughs> George will sell you this device for ninety nine ninety nine, dollars <laughs> Guaranteed. So, yeah, so we cut to uh, Pastor Deborah's place. A bunch of cops show up to search for the fugitive secretary who... They read about in the newspaper being a child in danger. And she goes, you need a search warrant. And the cop is like, oh, we have one. But just know, we don't care about search yes. warrants. <laughs> they then look to see if she's in the foyer and go, eh. Yep, yeah. If she's not in the entryway when we enter the door. She's probably not. <laughs> <laughs> they look around for one second. Now, she's not there, right? So it's not surprising that they don't find her. But even in their walk one second, they probably should have noticed slow motion trench coat pedophile walking guy, seeing as how he's in slow motion. Yep. He's just making a sandwich in the kitchen. Like, nothing <laughs> weird about that. Oh, just a regular slow motion Asian guy. All right, you're good to go here. Yeah, the second the cops leave, they're like, yeah, we should, well, we've been here for one and a half seconds. We haven't found her. She must not be here. Let's go, guys. So they leave. Then one second later, that guy, the slow motion walking pedophile trench coat ninja guy, is in her kitchen. They've never met, <laughs> right? And of course, he's there to give her the photographs he took of the drug deal so that she could give those same photographs to a DEA agent later. I don't understand what she does here. I brought you photos of a timeshare right near Disneyland that could be yours for just four weekends a year. <laughs> She's like, who are you anyway? He's like, believe it or not, I'm the writer of the film. I wrote this character for myself. <laughs> I, I I also wanted to be the ninja hero of the movie. So, okay, so she takes those photos to the DEA. She's like, you know, I got these from a secret pedophile slow motion ninja. He's like, hmm, interesting. They're just pictures of people talking to each other, right? Uh, photos? Come back when you have a staged reenactment by a group of adorable fifth graders, okay? We're gonna need more than that here in the DEA. You call this evidence? If it's not a tableau vivant, we don't accept it as evidence. <laughs> so, yeah, he even tells her, he's like, hey, all you have here is hearsay. You could get sued for hearsay. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I'll tell you what. 
if you have the actual shipment of drugs in your hands, then we'll look into it. I mean, we'll arrest you because you'll have a shipment of drugs with you, but we'll, <laughs> then we'll look into them. All right. So Pastor Deborah goes back to the safe house again at night because we can tell because of the blue filter. And we watch her walk around the safe house, check several doors before one of them opens. It opens. She goes in. Yep. But damn it, if the bad guys hadn't followed her there. And like they accidentally over music sting that moment. Like she walks in and we pan to the bad guy and it's like. I wanted it to pan over to a guy with the electric guitar and they're like, put it out, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> so meanwhile, inside Pastor Deborah is leading them in, in prayer. She's saying grace before they eat. And then she's like, this is her prayer. Basically, Dear Jesus, please send back up in the form of a slow motion trench coat karate ninja. <laughs> but unfortunately for them, bad ninjas show up to attack them. Yes, yes. Uh, I was so the appearance of, of ninjas made me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just rocking the full blown ninja outfit. Oh, and this is obviously because they only had three stunt. As we learned from their drug people, they only have two actors yep. and one of them is a stunt person. So they just dressed people up occasionally like ninjas. But it's a real drag when your church has ninjas. You got to get ninja traps. And then your wife wants you to get the have a heart ninja traps. And you're like, where am I going to release a ninja? Where am I going <laughs> to Japan? Because that's where they're from. <laughs> yeah. So but yeah, ninjas attack them. And, of course, the slow motion pedophile trench coat ninja shows up. He is, by the way, The Fist. That's the character's name. The Fist uh, shows up. Amazing. Is he not the spider? Isn't there a person called the spider in this movie? It doesn't matter. <laughs> I think there is a spider, too. But, yeah, no, he's The Fist. So the two of them are kicking ninja's asses together. At one point, they literally stop. She says, are you ready? And he says, yes, before they throw the last ninja on the table. <laughs> are you ready? Because I don't want to hurt you. Okay. All right. Good. Okay. He's ready to go. Hey, are you Jesus? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She's like, but who are you? And then he wanders off all uh, fucking... Lone Ranger slash Batman slash Jesus style. And now Fred Williamson is in town. And that's that whole scene. That's it. The that's best it. thing about the hammer is he will constantly announce his arrival, but not do anything. He's like, hello, I'm here within the city limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And, and then like they, they, we cut immediately from that to the mayor learning that hammer's in town. And he's like, damn it. He's a legitimate actor. I'm pretty sure he's the main character of this thing. I, I don't know <laughs> for sure. And then, okay, I have to fucking point this part out because I love it so goddamn much. The chick that works for Mr. X calls George Dillman. I'm sorry, Dillman George. And she says, hey, the hammer is in town who also works for us, but don't be seen with him yet because, you know, reasons to which Dillman George says, yeah, it's like that old saying, divide and conquer. No, <laughs> no, it's fucking not. That's it's in that fucking saying you're dividing the thing you're trying to conquer. It's not you divide up and then conquer you fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, if we want to win this football game, let's only put half our team on the field. <laughs> right? Don't divide and conquer. <laughs> And pretend not to know the other half of the team when they show up. Trust me. <laughs> what the fuck was that? All right. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So now we are going to introduce a, another major contender for the star of the show in my mind. And that is the tiny little basement where all 46 of the bad guys get together to awkwardly meet. Pirate themed gang. <laughs> I want to go over this gang. There is yes. a gentleman. It's the mayor's <laughs> mom's house. There is a gentleman with an eye patch. Yes, there is. There is someone's mom wearing a lovely black velvet hat. <laughs> uh, and then there is another guy wearing a waistcoat because without question, this gang is made up of four people, each using one piece of a pirate costume. Yeah. 
<laughs> There's a fifth guy over there with a wooden leg. <laughs> There's no question that the fourth guy refused to use the wooden leg because he's just wearing a T-shirt and his arms are crossed because they yelled at him for not using the wooden leg. The costume designer went to Halloween Adventure. They just sold out of everything but the pirate costume. He's like, look, would you give me an $11 budget for costuming this gang? This is what you get. <laughs> They can share. Yeah, so they, they are sitting around and they're making a deal in the uh, in the basement. And the deal, as I understand it, is that everyone can have all the drugs that they want, but they have to give 25% of the profits to the mayor, which is an amazing fucking deal. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're selling cocaine at a 75% markup? Yes, I will take some of that. <laughs> Jesus. Um, yeah, great deal for the criminals. Meanwhile, Fred Williamson literally renegotiates his contract in the middle of the fucking movie. It's yes. the greatest moment in, in the world. <laughs> we just cut to him going like he's on the phone and he's like, well, you know, what would make me With feel better. Agent, very clearly. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, what would make me feel a little better is 50,000 more dollars. Okay. And that's it. That's the whole scene. <laughs> he has done nothing. Listen, I'm doubling my day right. <laughs> so, all right. So, meanwhile, some seven-year-olds are smoking a joint. And some other drug dealers show up. I don't even know who to... I don't think we've met any of these people, right? This was very confusing for me. Okay. Yeah, it was. it was a hard time to follow. So in a movie that has already introduced 37 different teams of drug dealers, a different team of drug dealers is dealing drugs and a different, different team of drug dealers comes up to argue about whether they're dealing drugs on their turf. But they need a drug dealing chore wheel. We also just had a scene where all the drug dealers agreed to be on the same team. Yep. Moments ago. <laughs> that was the immediate previous scene. Yes. <laughs> so, But yeah, so and then. This other group of drug dealers shows up, says, you can't sell drugs here. And he's like, yes, I can. Pulls out a gun. He shoots the guy he's shooting point blank four times immediately in front of him. And then that guy runs away. Yeah, he misses everyone for sure. Yep. He just starts shooting randomly, right? Because, you know, once you start shooting, you might as well shoot everybody. Well, if it's, it's not safe if you don't empty the place. Well, right. Yeah. Otherwise, you'll have bullets. Yeah. And those are those are dangerous. So, yeah, so among the people who get shot, actually, I guess the only person that he actually hits is Cholo's kid. No. Who was hanging out doing drugs there the whole time. Yes. So so now, apparently, the kid got shot in the head, not in a necessarily bad way, right? He's alive. He's in a coma. Yeah, he has severe, severe eye shadow, as we can see from <laughs> his gunshot <laughs> wound. <laughs> Yeah, the, this kid, by the way, is super duper not doing a good job of being in a coma. He keeps licking his lips and shit. <laughs> <laughs> listen, Cholo, listen, we're concerned about the gunshot wound to the head, but we have a lot of questions about this eye shot. <laughs> is it a goth phase? Uh, you know? So this is where he talks to babysitter lady and she says, the doctor says he has 72 hours to get better. And then... And she sort of trails off and he's like, and then what? And I wanted her so badly to just be like, well, then he won't get better if he yeah, doesn't get right. better. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, I wrote in my notes, she's like 72 hours to regain consciousness. Is that biblical or what? <laughs> or we won't fucking punish his owner? I mean, come on. Also, it's so distracting, but there's a super like burstingly full IV bag right in the center of the frame. This entire thing. <laughs> I found it very distracting. Yeah, the nurse had to duck out of the shot because she definitely just put that IV in. <laughs> so then, of course, Cholo has his like kind of come to Jesus moment where he sure is sorry for all his drug dealing ways and he prays to God to make his son okay again. And in case you couldn't get what was going on, the babysitter character says, and I quote, you have faith, Cholo. Nothing is impossible to God. In case you weren't getting it. And then 
we pan up to the cross, but I guess the camera was heavy or the guy was losing his balance because they like struggle. You can feel them like pulling it off a tripod to pan up to a crucifix. It's fucking I amazing. The hand of God itself was like, I do not want to be in this fucking movie. <laughs> don't, I don't want to, please don't associate me with your movie. You are not panning to this cross. This is bullshit. <laughs> And by the way, I, I, I have a good authority that Pizza Hut feels the same way. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now that this fucking movie has firmly established that it legit belongs on this show and it has the whole time, I think we can pause for another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will there ever be a reason for George Dillman's character to exist? Will the fact that guns have been banned ever be revisited? Will they ever explain who the slow motion walking guy is? No. No on all three, <laughs> but stick around anyway for the greatest conclusion in the history of God awful movies or any movie at all for that matter. Doc, shoot straight with me. Is my son going to live? Uh, well, Cholo, sorry, is that really your name in this movie? That's just, it's just so problematic. Yeah, I try not to think about it too much. Okay, anyway, uh, your son has a very serious head wound. Uh, hopefully he recovers in the next 72 hours. And if he doesn't? Well, if he doesn't recover, um, he, he'll die. Die. Yes, I'm, I'm afraid so. No, what does that mean, die? I'm sorry, what is, you're asking me what death is? Uh, Mr. Cholo, are you okay? <laughs> of course not. Look at me. Here's my son with only 27 hours to live. That's not what I said. And all I can do to help is wear these big red shoes. Uh, your nose is bleeding, sir. Doc, shoot straight with me. Is my son going to live? What? <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to open up on the mayor's assistant in church. This is where um, Hammer shows up to have an entirely meaningless conversation with him. Oh, it's phenomenal. He's just like, look. I know that you're part of the mayor's drug dealing ring, so you should turn them over to me. And he's like, mm, I don't want to. And he's like, please? Okay, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll, okay, yeah, if you say please. Yeah, absolutely. But but he doesn't. Nope. He doesn't, right? Like, so it never comes up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need immunity. Okay, you got it. Well, I don't know, I thought, no, still. All right. Yeah, right. No, so I would need more. And that well, but so what's amazing to me about this is that they never explain why the hammer would know this. It never has any impact in the larger movie. I, they, they never explain why anybody would know where this drug deal is happening, right? Right. So yeah, and not like it matters. Everybody just knows whatever they need to get to the next scene in this film. Anyway, so then we get the scene where Cholo is coming to grips with his drug dealing past. He's looking through his uh, kid's room frantically trying to find his stash. Yeah, or maybe he's trying to find the post-it note he wrote down the cure for gunshot wounds to the head on. <laughs> <laughs> God, I, I wrote in my notes, check his crayon box under the pogs, but it's so much sillier than that because it's in the VHS box for James and the Giant Peach. <laughs> yes, <laughs> The giant plastic VHS tape boxes, yeah. And by the way, this kid has this enormous bag of so, cocaine. I oh, want to hang out with this kid. This kid can have a lot of bad personality traits. I'll still hang out with him. That's all I'm going to There say. were like thousands of dollars worth of cocaine in this giant bag. How much money did this kid have? Like, Jesus, right? cut this kid's allowance. He's getting too much money. Fucking Scarface would tell that kid to slow down. It's You know, it's a vicious cycle because he, he shovels the snow at the neighbors and then he buys that Coke with the money. Then he's faster at shoveling. And oh, it just gets worse. yeah. Like, <laughs> right, right. All right. But so, yeah, so Cholo, like, looks at this gigantic bag of cocaine and he has this breakdown moment. But then we have magical Bible pages. The oh. Bible just starts blowing open. Why is there a Bible there? Who the fuck even knows? But a Bible just starts blowing open. And apparently the Bible is just, you know, you ever watch somebody trying to skip through a thing where you're just like, can you just paraphrase the part of the book that you're looking for for me, man? It's like that. It takes forever to get all the way to, to wherever the hell it's trying to get. 
it stops at the thou shalt not suffer a witch to live page. It's like, ah, fuck, hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I did it. not mean for this to stop on fucking Leviticus. <sighs> guys, guys, come on, come on. I'm trying to get to the Isn't end. Isn't there like a cocaine is bad page somewhere <laughs> in this fucking book? Any chance they cut your son into 26 pieces? And that's what's... <laughs> no. What if you stabbed uh, him? The whole the whole foreskin bit. We'll just stay with the foreskin bit. We'll we'll figure it out from there. <laughs> so, all right, yeah. So now we cut to Pastor Deborah wrapping up her Sunday services, and would you know it? Cholos come to church, right? Everybody leaves, and Cholos still left behind. To which she's like, "Oh, are you gonna kill me? Because pretty sure you're the main bad guy, and I'm the main good guy." And he's like, "No, I think I'm a good guy, actually. Uh, if you believe that." And she's like, eh, I don't know. But he does have an apropos Bible quote. She's like, oh, he must be a real Christian now. Boy, Christians are easy to trick. Just one one Bible quote. And like, ah, I guess you're with me then. Yep. He also, has, he also has that weird moment where he's like, my son is about to die. And I wrote weird pessimism. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now the, the henchies come in. They tell Mr. Mayor that Cholo has, has converted and he's Christian now. Right. Yeah, these guys get their information like they're watching the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was just in the last scene. Cholo was talking to the priest. I think we're in fucking trouble. Yes. All right. So yeah. So then we get more of Cholo sadly looking through his kids' room. And there's I only bring this scene up because there's a moment where he's playing with the kids' Wolverine doll, and the actor can't help but get visibly excited when the little claws come out. <laughs> I <laughs> uh, see. I just wanted him to accidentally find larger and larger stashes of cocaine in each toy. Right? Like he's like, oh, God, is this an eight? All right. This must be a bag of sugar. No, still cocaine. All right. Oh, wow. The, the whole stretch Armstrong filled with cocaine. I got to <laughs> talk to my son about who his source is. It's so, yeah, Dad, I only had to pay 25%. It's great. So then he walks out of the room and somebody hits him with a baseball bat. This is that little tiny henchman that was giving him shit earlier for changing his shirt. It's also the be the beginning of the fight. It's very rarely does the beginning of the fight start with surprise hitting the head of the baseball bat. That is almost <laughs> always the end of the fight. Yep, but no, that's where we're going to open this one, yeah. Well, so they had this prop baseball bat that they could really hit him with, and they were going to get their fucking money's worth out of that, right? Yeah. They hit him a good 17 times with that fucking thing before this scene is over. But then they're like... But we're not going to kill you because there are 20 minutes left in the movie. Yes. They say either you die or the preacher dies. Listen, man, we looked ahead in the script and we know we can't kill you yet. So <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> where will we get our information? So apparently he agreed to kill Pastor Deborah. So she like goes to the church or he goes to the church to, to kill her. And then they have this bizarre fucking exchange. Right, that begins with her saying, "What happened to your face?" But, but they didn't do anything to his. But there's no makeup or anything to indicate what she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think they eye shadowed him, but like it's obvious this actor was like, "Get this girly stuff off me!" And they're like, <laughs> "Okay, we'll just we'll just have her say what happened to your face." Yeah, either that or they covered his face with with blue makeup being a bruise, but then the blue light canceled it out. So we just can't see it. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Cause her next line is, what are you doing here this time of night? And they like come back to him and it's very clearly the middle of the day outside, but they have the blue filter going again. <laughs> and he goes, I was sent here to kill you. And she's like, you're going to kill me. He's like, no, it was weird that they would just trust me to do that after they hit me with a baseball bat. But no, of course not. They use the shark camera angle for him entering the church, which is great. Like that point of view, jaws under the water mm -hmm. camera angle. And so I, for a second, <laughs> thought that she was going to be sitting in the church tidying up and just get eaten by a shark. And it would have surprised <laughs> me zero for this movie. Nope. Makes the same amount of sense as the rest of the movie. Right. But for this to have turned out to be a shark movie. Yeah. No surprise at all. The only way it could have been better. Also, he opens that chat by being like, I'm here to kill you. But I'm not going to. Sorry, probably should have said that first. Seemed like I was going to kill you. Uh, it's on me. <laughs> Odd for me to put a dramatic pause in there. Now that I think about it, looking back on this. All right. So then we have this series of quick, quick shots where basically th this desperate effort by the director to say, no, 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 no. It's almost over, guys. You almost made it. We're almost to the finale. Because <laughs> this is where we go back to bad guy basement. 
We have uh, Hammer showing up at the headquarters of the bad guys. We have Dillman showing up at the headquarters. Again, all filmed with the blue filter to make it look like it's nighttime if you're not paying attention. Mm-hmm. Oh, and also, by the way, Cholo and, and Pastor Deborah show up at, at bad guy HQ as well. She's wearing this bright red jacket, but because they shot it with this blue filter, it looks goddamn ridiculous. It looks like it was painted after the fact or something. (laughs) It's also weird that she was like, all right, time to sneak into the big drug lair. Let me get a nice bright red sports coat. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They might have guns. I don't want them to shoot me by accident. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, so now, of course, there's a roof sniper at Bad Guy HQ, but they can take him down by just climbing up on the roof and beating him unconscious with a pipe. <laughs> and she brought a pipe. It's like, really? apparently, like, yes. Trouble didn't have a gun. Like, we, all right, all right, fair enough. Right. A pipe, I guess. Right. Better, for, than, better than For a preacher, you sure did beat a man to death with a pipe just now. Okay. <laughs> All right, so now we got the big drug deal showing up. We've got the big van showing up. Everybody hugs. You know, there's a whole big like, oh, my God, I have not seen you since the last big drug dealer. How's your kids? Kind of a moment. Oh, there needs to be way more huggy drug deals in movies. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Hugs, not drugs. I'm sorry. Is that one eyed Vinny? (laughs) Get over here. Also, their drugs are boxed. But they forgot to click that thing that makes your drugs all come in the same box when right. you get them from Amazon. So, yeah, yeah it's really... Right, the same. And look, so there are like 31 boxes of drugs. We watched them unload the entire van, bring all the... We watched people carry boxes for so goddamn long before this is over. We do. I disagree. I wanted more boxes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, and then, of course, this is also where slow motion walking pedophile trench coat ninja shows up as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the bad guys are all T-Rexes. So if you just sort of move slowly, they, they can't see you. Oh, yep. yeah, exactly. Well, yep. you have to hold your hands karate style. But yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we watch, and I, I don't know what the fuck this was doing in the movie, but we cut back to all the guys who are not carrying the boxes, waiting for the boxes to be carried. Oh, awkward silence gang is my favorite part of the movie, and I wanted so much more of it. So. So. So uh, how did you all form your your gang? Uh, you know, we, uh, we all got together to do crimes, and then, you know, kept just kept doing those crimes. Sure, sure. <clears throat> what? Say something? Oh, no, sorry. I was just, just coughed and cleared my throat a little. Oh, got it. Got it. COVID! I'm just I'm just kidding. I, I don't think you have COVID. Yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> you guys like crime? Oh, love it. Yeah, no, we're big into crime. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Me, yeah, me too. Me, yeah, we're all, we all love it. Okay, you know what? You know what? I, I, I'm I'm thinking of a thing, and you guys try and guess. Is it, it and crime? That's the... Yeah. Oh man, I knew it. Oh god. Well, but the, so here's the reason why it was okay that we had to leave that wonderful, wonderful scene because after that was over, we got to watch Dillman kick some ass with his sweet, sweet wrist control. <laughs> oh, his white guy karate noises are my everything. <laughs> Coop! Coop! Yes, yes! Coop! <laughs> <laughs> Every stunt person he hits stops and is like, hey man, did you say Kiop as you punched me just now? <laughs> Alright, so wait, wait. So now everybody, all the people who are competing to be main character of this film have shown up, and... The bad guys have to go arm themselves. They walk into this room, and there is a room with 67 guns in it, right? This goddamn movie could not afford anything. They couldn't afford one legitimate actor. They had the one baseball bat that everybody had to use. Everybody had to dress up as fat ninjas later so it wouldn't be so obvious that they'd use the same people for four different roles. But goddamn it, if this cast couldn't easily supply 103 guns for this scene. Right. Not just guns, guns in cubbies. This yeah. gang yes. has gun cubbies. 
organized yeah. guns yes. here. This is <laughs> if you wanted options, you could easily yes, add organized by the Dewey Decimal System. <laughs> Yeah, right, right. So they come in and they get the guns. We have a series of everybody kicking a little ass, right? We get Pastor Deborah's kick-ass cartwheel neck break move. Oh, my God. Okay, if you're listening to this podcast in a safe place, do a cartwheel right now. Okay, did you do a cartwheel? You did a better cartwheel than Pastor Deborah. No matter who you are, no matter how it went, if you can hear this, you did a better cartwheel than Pastor Deborah. <laughs> And yes, bedridden listener, we're talking to you. Yeah, especially you. <laughs> also, the hammer has just I don't know if we mentioned this. The hammer has been walking around in karate position for like seven minutes. I so wanted him to just walk through the entire finale without ever fighting anybody like that. You know, without ever coming across a bad guy. <laughs> oh, so fucking ready. He does, though. He, this is where he comes across his ninja. Yes, we're complete with ninja stars. So yes, <laughs> which he oh dodges. He so dodges good. the ninja stars, but but this actor is an older gentleman who can't do a convincing dodge. So he just sort of sways to the left and right, and then like pauses to check his back in his sciatica, and then <laughs> sways back again. He's like, "Yep, dodge those ninja stars." Yeah, okay, so now Fred Williamson, for the rest of the film, is going to be fighting this same guy. This guy is amazing, right? Because this guy will use, like, eight different martial arts weapons, which he's very clearly good at. Or he's good at, like, juggling, right? He's good at doing the flare with them and shit. So he'll, like, do, like, three minutes of cool tricks and shit with whichever weapon he's using, and then Fred Williamson will just hit him with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> This guy is the, is the human embodiment of the scene in Braveheart where every time you cut back to Braveheart, he has a different weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <absolutely>. Right. <laughs> and like nowhere to store all these weapons. Like he is, it's not like he has a backpack or a duffel bag with him. No, he's a character in Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Oh, crazy billionaire remake. It's just we watch this ninja go to his duffel bag. Well, all right, okay. Stick, <laughs> arm sticks didn't work. What about those Donatello forks, huh? I got Donatello forks so, now. First of all, that's Raphael, and secondly, their size. Um, but, <laughs> Sick burn, Don bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eli, you look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. So, and then we get a scene where Cholo kicks that little short dude's ass. And again, he's not a short guy. He's probably my height or taller. He's just <laughs> short compared to this eight foot dude they keep putting him on screen with. It was nice of Cholo to let the guy take his shirt off so that he could use his weapon more effectively. <laughs> yeah. like, the guy was like, oh, God, sorry. It's just, I don't have as much range of motion in this shirt. It's a little tight. Yeah, right, it yes. Absolutely. I want this to be a fair fight to the death. There's this also this great moment where he's fighting this one guy and like the guy every time he hits him the guy falls more dramatically into the boxes behind him and then he'll get up and <laughs> hit him again and he throw falls even more dramatically that goes on for a good two minutes. He's very obviously just thinking he's doing different takes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, are you sure you guys don't want to reset the boxes? Okay. <laughs> hey, you're the professional. It's not me. So now we cut back to Fred Williamson. His bad guy's doing nunchucks uh, now because you bet your ass he is. God, we needed nunchucks. <laughs> we really needed nunchucks. There's also, because we're, we're cutting now in between everybody's fights, right? There's this amazing exchange that I have to point out between Cholo and short henchman guy where he goes, uh, Cholo gets hit a couple times. He goes, ha, huh, my son hits harder than you. And the little short henchman guy goes, isn't your son in a coma? <laughs> <laughs> he's dead. No, he's not. Stop saying Burn. that. <laughs> Has it been 72 hours? If it's been 72 hours, he's dead. That's <laughs> he looks at his watch. No, he's still, he'll be alive by now, yeah. I attached a bomb to him, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Also, there's a late play at comic relief here, too, right? Like the guy that Pastor Deborah's fighting that decides, you know what? You know what? I'm going to be funny. I'm going to be the funny guy. Oh, that guy's amazing. Oh, so Talk good. about no small parts, just small actors. That guy really <laughs> makes his point four lines sing. 
Well, so first, this character just watches Pastor Deborah beat up lady drug dealer. Yep. And he, all he does is yell words of encouragement to lady drug dealer. Yep. Pastor Deborah wins because sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. <laughs> and then Pastor Deborah does the does basically like a, a look behind you, run into a pole, move. Yep. She just boos at him and he runs into a pole because he's the comic relief. And then, oh, and then we wrap up Cholo's fight with his arch nemesis, the henchman guy, I guess, with this amazing exchange. The henchman guy says, you're no better than me, Cholo. Cholo throws him down the stairs, and he's like, I'm a lot better. <laughs> That's the line. Fantastic. Well, he got fighting. He is, obviously. Yep. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. We all have our strengths, henchmen. Oh, and now fucking random weapon guy has size. <laughs> I want that guy in every goddamn movie, right? Like, I could just watch, like, 45 minutes of this guy and Fred Williamson fighting. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. I mean, it'd be slow because they're both old. And don't yes. <laughs> and right. This could have been the whole movie. <laughs> it really could have. So everybody kicks a bunch of ass. Cholo and Pastor Deborah catch the mayor's assistant. And then, like, the movie doesn't really deal with this, but they're like, ha ha, we've caught the mayor's assistant. Shit. How are we going to tie the mayor? To- ah, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, you know, I only just realized that the mayor just, we never see or hear from him ever again. No, right. He just goes nope. on to be the mayor. Yeah. Turns, turns, <laughs> out, turns, out, turns out the police show up to arrest him, and the CIA shows up and goes, oh, no, 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 no. he's with us. So he gets to still be mayor. Thanks. (laughs) All right. So then we cut back to Cholo. Like everybody's all the bad guys have been beat up. Slow motion walking guy walks away in slow motion. High fives all around. Yep. 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 (laughs) And then we cut back to the hospital. Cholo's kid is still in in a coma, still in a coma, still in a coma. Now he isn't. So that's good. (laughs) Oh, by the way, when Cholo rushes to hug his <laughs> yes, son out yes. of joy, he knocks off his IV. <laughs> Wait, can we talk about the establishing shot of this hospital where the full oh, moon of oh. the hospital is obscured by a bush? Yes, <laughs> yes. Like, very clearly, they were filming in the parking lot and a hospital administrator came out and was like, you can't fucking film here. Like, get out. There's a hospital. You're like, you're blocking an ambulance. So they hide <laughs> behind the bush. They hide behind the bush. And like oh, we don't want, we can't get Sacred Heart Memorial Hospital because they'll sue us. So we'll just we'll use this bush to obscure the name of the hospital. We'll just get Memorial Hospital. It's just That's the Memorial. Shot. We did. It. <laughs> yes. And then we wrap everything up in the same church that it all started in. We listen to them sing a song where the lyrics seem to be "God, glory, glory, God, God, glory, glory, oh. glory, God." Yeah, next time someone tells me religion is good because of the music, I'm going to play them this song. <laughs> <laughs> and then, oh, by the way, we also watch, uh, we see Cholo and his kid. The kid's confined to a wheelchair forever. I guess, like, God dialed in the miracle there <laughs> or something. And the eyeshadow is still very prominent. Yeah, oh, yeah, great. he still got the eyeshadow problem, yeah. God was like, you did a lot of cocaine, huh? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I can't. I can't just be like, listen, you did that much cocaine, no big deal, who cares? Like, it is kind of a big deal. <laughs> so, yeah, so, like, yeah, then we watch everybody sing to God, and then we get a fucking shot of a of a seagull. Right? Yep. That's what we were looking at at the end. It wasn't a dove. It's just, it's just a seagull, and then it freezes on the seagull, and that's <laughs> the end of the movie. The dove costs a lot more. That's you wanted funny. a shot of a bird, you got a shot of a <laughs> they bird. They couldn't get the rights to Dove. <laughs> <laughs> D- it was Dove Memorial Hospital. They don't like to talk oh, about that, it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> in, the, in the original take, someone just threw a bar of soap and they filmed it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's try it again with chocolate, though, with chocolate. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our review of Transform, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because apex of our existence or no, we still have to review another movie next week. So, Eli, tell us. What's on deck? Heaven's War. All right. So with Heaven's War to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 256 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Devin Hader for hanging out with us tonight. And perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of our episode. 
You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Crate, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song is written and performed by Ryan Slott, and we will draft us on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a little chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Probably to work harder or earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. My drug of choice is Jesus. I am D on the Lord. <laughs> Trench coat pedophile angel ninja was supposed to be Jesus, I guess. George Dillman would go on to shrink himself down and take out coronavirus once and for all <laughs> in space. That pressure point stuff's real. Yes. <laughs> if you ever fight me, please use it. <laughs> I'm going to go all bladder seven you. <laughs> <laughs>